In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a simple Google form to collect some information about students regarding any kind of formative assessment that you want to do in class. So I'm inside of Google Drive, and in order to create a new form, I'm just going to go ahead underneath of the Google Drive icon, just click on New, and then Google Forms. It's a purple icon inside of Google Drive. If you do not see that, you might have to click on more and get a drop down list where it gives you a bunch of other options here. But mine's uh, Google Forms. Once you make it, it looks like this in Google Drive, but it should actually open up a brand new tab and bring you to this untitled form here. So we're going to talk about basic setup, check out some different settings, and then we'll check, take a look at what responses look like in a different video. So for this one, I'm going to give this one a title. So I'm going to change my untitled form to formative assessment number one. Okay. And so once I click off of that, it should change my untitled form. If I click up here to formative assessment number one, so that it actually will rename it in Google drive for you. You can also do a form description. So if you want to add in uh, either SOL objectives, uh, some kind of directions for the students, maybe what the form of assessment is about. You can always put that in there. But I just called it Fordham Assessment Number One. Of course, give it something super specific so when you're inside of Google Drive, you can actually see what that formative assessment is about. Now we're going to set up the first couple questions. And th these are not going to be questions. These are actually going to be a places where th they're going to give you a response for their first name, last name, in which uh, block you, they are in. So I'm going to click on untitled question and I'm just going to call this first name. And Google realizes that you want a short answer. So it changes it automatically to short answer. And what you want to do is make this required. So it forces students to fill out this, to fill out this information. And then what I'm going to do is if I like this format, there's some features down here that are going to help me out. And one of them is duplicate. So if I press duplicate, uh, I have first name. Now I want to do last name. Once again, I want it required. It's going to be short answer. But instead of duplicating this one, now what I want to do is create a drop down. And over here to the right, I have some features here. And I'm looking just for the add question button. So I click on add question. And I might call this block if I teach multiple blocks or multiple sections. And of course, if you teach elementary school, uh, this might be uh, what part of the day you're in, uh, if it's your morning meeting or you're in reading or whatever that is. But if you're in middle school, high school, and you have blocks, this is going to be super important. Uh, but say I want to change this from multiple choice to a nice little drop down. So what I do is I click on multiple choice, that little arrow key, and I click on drop down. I'm going to add my options in. So I'm going to just add a couple in here. So I have block A, one, two. And then I have A, 3, 4, and I might teach on a B day, 5, 6. Okay. So I have some drop downs for that. And of course, I make this required. This is all the basic information that you, that you need to collect from students. Um, because once you see the responses, you can sort by last name. You can sort by block number. You can just see only certain blocks at certain times in the, in the Google Sheet responses that you'll see. It makes it easier to kind of look and sort through the data. Now what I want you to do is you're going to hit that plus button again to add a question. And so now we're going to get to the questions that you're going to add inside of here. And so for these questions, of course, make them all required. And then uh, when you click on uh, the multiple choice, you have multiple choice checkbox. You have a drop down. For the sake of this assignment, for if you're watching this and you're a Shenandoah University career switcher, uh, you're really going to focus on multiple choice, uh, checkbox, and drop down. I'm going to have you stay away from short answer and paragraph um, because for the sake of the, the next assignment, looking at the Google Sheet, uh, it's just going to make it a little trickier for you to do that next step. Not saying that you can't, but I'm going to have you make your life just a little bit easier and kind of stick with this multiple choice checkbox and drop down feature. And so for this assignment, you want to have four to five questions, five questions max inside of this. And once you get your five questions put in here, so I'm just going to type in random, obviously random question, if I can spell. 
and then add in some options, option one, option two, option three, option four. Uh, of course, after you get done your questions, you can kind of play with this a little more. There's some uh, some different buttons inside of here, just to give you an idea. You can kind of see there's this picture icon everywhere. You can actually add pictures to your questions. You can add pictures to your responses. Uh, if you want to put in uh, a video in between a question, you can add a YouTube video um, to a, before a question. Say, please watch this video and then answer the follow next three questions. So there are some things that you can do inside of a Google form that are absolutely amazing. But once you get that done, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on settings. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make this a quiz. So we're going to assign point values uh, for each one of these questions. Once I do that, you notice that when I do that, all of a sudden a bunch of features show up here. And uh, we're going to set our default points value. We're actually going to set that to zero right now. And we're going to... And I'll tell you why, because when you set this up as a quiz, it's going to think that your name, your first name, last name, and block number are all part of the quiz and will default that to one point. You don't, you're not giving points for kids to fill in out the Google form, so we're going to kind of bypass that. You're going to click on responses. And one of the things I like to do is to collect email addresses. What this does is it forces students to use their school domain for responses. So you can see when they click on that Google form, it will ping whoever is logged into that Chromebook as the user uh, for that. And of course, you could uh, allow response editing if you want to. Uh, you can send uh, responders a copy of the responses. So you can see how they responded to on a quiz if you want to do that. You can limit it to one response. So instead of doing the quiz over and over and over again, uh, you can limit that just to one response. There's some other features inside of here. Uh, presentation, if you click on that, you have like show progress bar. So if you have a really long quiz, uh, it's kind of nice to um, to kind of have that set. So it'd be like, hey, how much more do I have left for this? There's also shuffle question order. And so before you get really excited about this, it will also shuffle name, first name, last name, and block number. So it's nice if you just have questions, but then you have to make sure to find a way to actually collect uh, who's actually taking the quiz. So after we get done with our settings, now let's go back to the questions. And so now we find out that each one of these questions now has a feature called answer key with one point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our answer key. You wanna go ahead and select the correct response, which for this one, I'm just, for the sake of video, it's option three. This is set to one point, but we're going to go back and double check just to make sure that our first name, last name, and block number are set to zero points. So my first name you can see here is set to one point. We need to fix that. So let's go ahead and click on answer key and set that to zero and press done. Let's kind of do that for, for my other ones. We're setting first name, last name, and block number to zero points. They don't get any points for that. Thank you very much. And we're going to go back to this one. And you can see here, now that I set this, this answer choice to option three for one point, you can actually add answer feedback. So when you click that, you can give um, feedback for incorrect answers and correct answers. You can also set up a YouTube video or a link for them to review that question. So there's some really cool things inside of here, but I'm gonna press save for this video and hit done. And once you do that, you have this all set up. Now you need to give it to students you need to press the eyeball for that. Press the eyeball and you will have a Google form that is ready to be filled out. And the way that you know it's ready to be filled out is the last part in the URL. Uh, I know you can't see this in the video, but it should say view form at the end of that URL. You're going to copy that whole thing and it's ready to give for students. And so that is my complete walkthrough, how to create a simple Google form. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, my email is william.peterson at lcps.org. Uh, you can also hit me up on Twitter at BAMTeacherTech. Thanks so much for watching this video about how to create a simple Google form for formative assessment. And we're done.